morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Greetings from the Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church at 106 County Road 1111, Atlanta, Texas, zip code 75551. I am your host, Pastor Alyssa Maxey, to the Shiloh Church family. They will keep on praying to God that everything will be all right. Let us pray. Father, we come to you once again with bowed heads and humble hearts. Thank you, Lord, for love their fellowship, for love their friendship, Lord. Thank you for this day, a brand new day we've never seen before. A day that will not promise nor guarantee, but only because of your grace and your mercy. For that, Lord, we say thank you. For our special prayer today for Brother Kurt Bradley. All the bereaved families, Father God, you know who they are, Lord, that love loved ones. That you would touch their hearts, ease their minds. Give them clarity and give them understanding. They'll always say thank you. Father God, we ask you to stop by the hospitals, the nursing homes, the institutions, the jailhouse, Lord, even those that are homebound. You stop by and see them, Lord, for that we say thank you in advance. Father God, we ask you to bless the President of the United States and all his new cabinet members. Bless the Congress, Senate, Father God. Bless them all, that they will all be on one accord. So then you, Lord, before they make decisions, but they'll always say thank you. Father God, thank you for travel mercy, Lord. We left our respectful destination, Father God, headed to where we were headed. That you moved all harm and danger out of the way, Lord. We got there safely. Then, Father God, we leave this place and headed back home, Father God. You will once again move all harm and danger out of the way. But they'll always say thank you. Father God, bless every pastor, preacher, going to preach your word this morning, Lord. That you will move us out of the way. That you will intervene. And give us something to say, Lord, that will help someone along their way. In their lives, in their homes, on their jobs, and most of all, Lord, in their hearts. For that, Lord, we say thank you. Most of all, we thank you for your daughter, son, Jesus. That, Father God, he died to bear all our burdens. That we might have a right to the tree of life. That, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Our script read this morning will come from the New Testament, the New Testament, the Gospel according to John. The Gospel according to John. Chapter 14, then we begin with verse 15. Chapter 14, begin with verse 15. Amen? And verse 15 reads, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall all live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. And look at verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, 
He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. May God bless his word. I'd like to give for a subject this morning. Your help is here. Your help is here. Your help is here. I didn't say your help is on the way. I said your help is here. But for you to have the help, you must open your heart to receive him. We're still on the topic of, and God said this earth is mine. God created this earth. Therefore, he will not allow a lower being to steal it from him. You ought to hear what I said. God would not allow a lower being, which is us, human beings, y'all study praying for me, to take what he has created. If you believe in the living God, then you must also believe that God has everything under control. Today we're going to look at one promise that Jesus made to us. The reason I said Jesus made this promise to us is because it ain't over, y'all. To God say it's over. Somebody said thank you. His promise is still valid. His promise is still binding. Somebody say amen. Brother Kurt your help is here. The Holy Spirit plays a significant role in the life of the believer. The Holy Spirit serves as God's comforting agent. You ought to hear what I said. The Holy Spirit serves as God's comforting agent as God's personal presence dwelling in his people. The Holy Spirit constantly leads us as individuals to the truth of God and is a constant reminder of Christ's teaching and his commands. The Holy Spirit's role is to be our counselor, our helper, emphasize holiness in us. When an individual commits their life to God, God enters into their heart by way of the Holy Spirit. Y'all ain't praying for me today. John chapter 14 and verse 15. Here we see that Jesus is talking with his disciples. But remember, if you are a follower of Christ, you are also his disciple. So this promise is also made to you. Jesus promises us another helper. Verse 15 reads, If you love me, keep my commandment. Verse 16 says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, a comforter, that he may abide with you forever. In other words, your help is here. Now, there's a stipulation to this, though. There's something you must do in order to receive the Holy Ghost. You must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, the first thing it said, Jesus said in verse 15, Jesus said, if. That's a little word that has a big meaning. If you love me, then keep my commandments. If you love me. If you don't, then keep on breaking it. But if you love me, keep my commandments. Because you can't love me and break me at the same time. Well, y'all ain't talking to me today. Jesus' greatest commandment is simply love. But if you're not a child of God, then you might not find loving God 
so easy. Oh, y'all didn't like that one? If you're not a child of God, then you won't find loving God quite so easy. Matter of fact, you'll find it hard to do. You might find loving your brother hard to do. You might find loving me, oh, y'all ain't talking to me, hard to do. I might find loving you hard to do. But I say if you're not a child of God, it's easy for you to hate your brother that you don't even know. It's easy for you to hate somebody by the way they look and you don't even know. If you're not a child of God, you might find it easy to find fault with your fellow man. Because finding fault in me is no fault of mine. Y'all ain't talking to me. I said finding fault in me is no fault of mine. Baby, it's your own fault. <laughs> oh, I stop about to talk to you today now. Now here's the good part. Jesus said, if you belong to me, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper, another comforter. Because Jesus was the first comforter. Oh, Lord, thank you. He came to this earth to comfort us, us, to guide us, to teach us, and to die for us. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. That he may abide with you forever. But now Jesus is leaving. He's going back home to be with his father. But Jesus didn't leave us without his guidance, without his love. He was sending another help. Brother and sister, I stopped by to tell you this morning that your help is here. I said your help is here. I don't mean in this building. I mean, your help should be, if you accept Jesus Christ, in your heart. So now you're saying, well, the Holy Spirit don't talk to me. Well, baby, you're telling me something. If he don't talk to you, then he's not in your heart. Now, we quick to say, something told me. Well, baby, I stopped by to tell you again this morning that something cannot talk, but the Holy Spirit can talk, and he talks to you. So just because Jesus took a break from this earth, he never intended to leave us alone. Somebody say amen. This promise is for his people. So, Sister Amanda, but as long as you have breath in your body, you still have time to become one of God's people. In other words, it's never too late to follow Jesus. Y'all ain't praying for me. There are no sin you've committed where Jesus won't forgive you except the sin of denying him and denying that who he is, that he is who he said he is, the son of the living God. Now, if you're denying that he is then you're not healed anyway. Somebody say, amen. And you're on your own. Dang it on the string. Now verse 17 reads, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him, neither knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So my question to you is, do you know him? Do he know you? The people that I know are people that I've met. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. If I don't ever meet you, I won't know you. It's the same thing with Jesus. If you never meet Jesus, you'll never know Jesus. If you never recognize who Jesus is, you'll never know that he's working in your life. You think it's man. You think it's the government? I'm sure they send me a check. Or oh, y'all ain't talking to me. You know what we're waiting on. All the 
things of this earth belongs to God. He is my father. He owned the cattle of a thousand, y'all ain't praying for me, a thousand hills. All the money that's in the bank belongs to him anyway. All the money in your bank account belongs to him anyway. All the money in your pocket belongs to him anyway. You just sitting on your money. Lord, help me today. Are you inside the ark of safety with Jesus? Let that symbol fall in. Are you inside the ark of safety with Jesus? Or are you on the outside trying to look in? Lord have mercy. You need to stop trying to look in and start trying to get in God's good graces. Thank you, Lord. To check this declaration, do a little check for me. If you can't communicate with the Holy Spirit, if he does not communicate with you, the comforter, the helper, then you're not connected to the Holy Spirit. Because if you're connected to him, he will talk to you. And you're not connected to Jesus Christ. You can't have one without the other. Oh, you might hear something every now and then. But if it's not about love, Lord, help me today, then it's not about God. Because God is love. Then it's not about the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is love. It's not about Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is love. Because of love, look at verse 18. Jesus says, I will not leave you. And often, oh, y'all ain't talking to me. I will not leave you fatherless. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Jesus is saying, I will not leave you helpless. I said, I will not leave you helpless. I will come to you through the person of the Holy Spirit. God loved Gave Jesus the right. I said God's love gave Jesus the right to make this promise to us. Y'all ain't praying for me? I said because of God's love for Jesus, he gave Jesus a chance to come down here on this earth and dwell among lies, killing thieves, backbiters, backsliders to give us another chance. And for that, Lord, I say, thank you, sir. For that reason, we're not orphans because Jesus' Father is our Father. Jesus said, we are not alone. Jesus said, my Father will be your Father. Somebody else said, thank you. In dwelling in the Father is dwelling in the Son. Verse 19 says, yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, you will live also. Lord, have me today. Jesus said, in just a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me simply because I live in you. Then he made this, this promise to us. He said, and you will live also. Somebody said, thank you. In other words, church, Jesus said in a few days, I'm going to be gone. My father will take me back. Lord, to his glory. And we will see Christ again in the person of the Holy Spirit. And because of his resurrection, he will live. And because we believe that he died and rose on the third day, we would also live. Lord, help me. Somebody will be shouting right now. We will also live. Look at verse 20. And that day you will know that I am in my Father. And you in me, and I in you. 
Church, you believe them, is to serve Christ because Christ, Lord have mercy, is secure in God, which enables us to live a victorious life. Lord, thank you. 21, he said, He who has my commandments and keep them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will also be loved by my Father. But the benefit of knowing Jesus Christ is the basking in his love, is the basking in his glory. You said, I will love him and manifest myself. I said, manifest myself in him. Manifest myself to him. Baby, I have Jesus manifest in your life. You have the love of God working on your behalf. I said, working in your life on your behalf. Because if you're still running scared and fearful, then you have not allowed Jesus full access to your heart. You must trust him. You must abide in him. Verse 22 says, Judah said to him, Lord, how is it that you would manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Y'all know the answer to this, right? I said you know the answer to this, right? Well, look at verse 23. Jesus answered said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him for it. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Jesus' word is simply the Bible. Brothers and sisters, open your Bible and see what great things are oh, happening that Jesus has in store for you. I said, open your Bible, baby. See what great things that you've been missing. Open your Bible and see that Jesus has something great in store for you. Verse 24 says, he who does not, hear me good, he who does not love me, Lord, you can't lie and say you keep my commandments. He who does not know me does not keep my words. And the words which he hear is not mine. But the Father who sent me. You know what Jesus said? Don't, don't listen to what I'm saying. This is what God's saying. Verse 24 tells us what's wrong with the world today. He who does not love me does not Keep my word. It's just that simple. We all, we need Jesus. And Jesus needs us to depend on him. The entire world needs Jesus. Because it's our job as believers to help Jesus convince the world that we still need him. Because the gift, Lord, help me today, of his peace is knowing that we need him. Look at verse 25. Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. America, the Holy Spirit is still here. Oh, Lord, have me today. He's still waiting for you to make a connection with him. Because Jesus said, peace, I leave with you. I'm talking about sanctifying peace. My peace I give to you. The peace of God. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Because the peace the world gives is on the surface. 
But the peace that God gives is in the heart. Y'all ain't praying for me. I said the peace that God gives is in the heart. So let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be your friend. Because your help is here. For the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is still in control. Not only of my life, but also in your life. That's why Jesus died for us all with three nails and a cross. And he hung there, bled, and he died. And he allowed us to be buried in Joseph's brand new borrowed tomb. And his barber because he wasn't going to need it long. And he lay there all Friday evening and all Friday night. He laid there all day, Saturday and all Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he rode with all power. And I thank God he rode, and I thank God for Jesus. And I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, your help is here. If you receive him. Amen. Amen. The door of the church open. Would there be one today that when it comes to Jesus Christ and your Lord and Savior? Would there be one? He loves you. He's been waiting for you. You just come. But please don't wait for time that's not on your side. Amen? If you need me, just call me. My number's on the website. Father God, let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word today. We thank you that you pricked somebody's heart somebody's mind, that they open their arms and receive you into their heart. Lord, we thank you once again for traveling mercy. Lord, we leave this place and never from your presence. Lord, God, we have to stretch prayer once again for Brother Kurt Bradley and all the family of the law of loved ones, Father God, just this past week, that you touch their hearts. Touch us to read up, Father God. Give us strength. Give us guidance. Lord, God, we thank you in advance what you're going to do in her life. Lord God, most of all, we thank you for your daughter's son, Jesus, and what he did in the old rugged cross, that he bear all our burdens, Lord, that we might have a right to the tree of life. For that, Lord, we say thank you, and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you, and may God keep you. It's my prayer after the next time.